Hi, I'm Tessa. I'm on the EAOP online tutors. I'm doing the AP review for um, environmental science. Um, today, I'm going to be doing a review for ecosystems. So let's start. So ecosystems. So here's a quick overview. Ecosystems is a part of the living world unit. It's about 10 to 15 percent of the test. All the key concept words will be in bold, so keep an eye out for them. Here's the areas that you'll be tested on. Ecology, energy flow, ecosystem diversity, and natural ecosystem changes. Alright, let's start with ecology. So basically bi biological populations and communities. So that would be intra-Pacific, inter-Pacific, and ecosystems are the main words you want to know for that. So inter-Pacific are same species that interact with other, with other and occupy with each other and occupy a Pacific area. Cr it creates a population. Inter-Pacific are different species living, living and interacting in the same area, and they form a community. An ecosystem is a system formed by the interaction of a community with their environment. So think of it this way. The, what, it, what you start with is a biosphere. Within the biosphere are ecosystems. Within the ecosystem are communities. Within those communities are populations. And those popu different populations are species and organisms. Ecological niches is an area within the habitat and includes species um, that are both living and non-living and they use the resources of the environment. So a generalist species is, can live in broad niches. They can within a lar large range of environmental conditions like us humans, mice, roaches and stuff like that. And specialists live in narrow niches and are sensitive to environmental changes like pandas. That's why there's usually specialist species that are endangered species. Um, interaction among species is very important too. So, and, and as you can see from um, this depiction in the pictures, so smiley face means it benefits one species, a sad face means that it harms another species, while a straight face means there's no effect. So amnialism, so there's no effect on one species, but yet harms another species. And as you can go through and read all these on your own. Keystone species are species whose presence contributes to the balance and diversity of an ecosystem. So the loss of that species would have a large impact on the, on the ecosystem itself and affect all other like aspects to it. Some great examples of this are Woofs, grizzly bears, sea stars, prairie dogs, and sea otters. Binomes are major regional or global communities characterized by the type of dominant plants and animal life. Um, what really makes a binome a binome is the temperature and rainfall. And they're most important to determine um, what a binome is. So here's a quick picture of um, the binomes. So you can pause it, but I'm going to come right back to this. Here are the um, main binomes you need to know about. Coastal zones, coral reefs, deserts, grasslands, savannas, tundras, carnivorous forests, de delicious deriverous forests, rainforests, and temperate shrublands. As you can see going back to this picture, um, deserts, for instance, are dry, and they all, they're dry, and they're hot, while rainforests are hot and wet, and you can go up and see what the, um, climate is like for each, each one of these binomes. And this picture, um, depicts a binome by region, as you can see. So definitely look at this on your, um, pause and look at the video if you want to know more about this. So species diversity. Organisms that live in different environments are specifically adapted to their binodes. And the main type of organisms are aquatic organisms, desert organisms, grassland organisms, forest organisms, 
tundra organisms, and trepid sh shrub forest land organisms. Um, the edge effect is how local environment changes along some type of boundary or edge. Um, the great example for this is like when clear cuts of trees. So as you know, like in suburbs and stuff, all of a sudden it's forests and all of a sudden it's houses. And it can have a negative effect on many animals such as deers and stuff that really live in that. So open community edge effect is gradual or has indistinct boundaries. Like it slowly changes from from like a forest to grassland slowly. Closed communities is sharply divided from its neighborhood. So you think of literally like um, literally suburbs being on one end and the forest being on the other end just like sharp line, tree line um, connected the two. So let's move on to energy flow. So with energy flow, the ultimate source of energy is the sun. Basically, it's the biggest thing. So photosynthesis, as you know, is when plants take carbon dioxide and water and light energy to make carbon carbohydrates and oxygen. Cellular um, respiration is kind of the same. It's the opposite of photosynthesis, which is when glut glutose is oxidized by cells to produce carbon dioxide, water, and chemical energy. Um, food webs and um, tropic levels um, really show this. So tropic level each is each feeding in the food train. So we have the primary producers, the primary consumers, and the secondary consumers. Primary producers are usually the plants and they use photosynthesis to create energy. Primary consumers are the herbivores, the ones, the animals that only eat plants. The secondary consumers are the ones that eat the herbivores and eat the secondary consumers that eat those herbivores. So really they're the meat eaters that are higher up on the chain. Here's some um, food webs that you should definitely look into. This is, this is one for the desert binome. This is a food web for cold, the cold <laughs> desert binome or cold oceans. This is the food web for the Chepret um, forest binome. This is the um, food web for the this is the tundra food chain, as you can see. So ecological pyramids are kind of like food webs, but they're not really exactly. The ecological pyramid begins with the producer on the bottom, such as plants and stuff, and proceeds to the various topic levels. Sunlight is the ultimate energy source for the plants. Potential energy is lost as you move up in the energy chain. This is like a second law of thermodynamics. Some energy is transferred from to surroundings as heat, and no process can be 100% effective. The average en energy loss um, is 90% as each cycle goes up through a higher tropic level. Here's some energy pyramid. This is for the um, desert energy pyramid, the um, ocean energy pyramid, the cold oceans, um, the forest energy pyramid. The move for ecosystems, starting with ecosystem diversity. Let's get to it, y'all. So biodiversity. Biodiversity describes diversity at three generic at three generic levels. So genetic, species, and ecosystems. Um rainforest like for instance, rainforests only cover seven percent of the land, but hold over half of all the species, making it one of the most diverse binomes. So here's a a table that describes the diversity increasers and diversity decreasers. So what decre increased diversities are things like Diverse habitats, environmental conditions with low variations, um, talk rate levels with higher diversity, and evolution. Biodiversity decreasers um, are environmental stress, extreme limitations to the supply of fundamental resources, um, extreme bio um, environments going from too hot to way too cold, and geographic isolation. 
So natural selection occurs by determining which traits organisms have to help them survive, reproduce, and pass on those traits. Natural selection leads to evolution, which describes how species attain genetic traits and allow them to survive in changing environments. So natural selection operates in three main ways, stabilizing, directional, and disruptive. So stabilizing is the most common. It affects the most extreme of the population. Individuals who are too far from the average are removed and decrease in diversity and there is no um, evolution. Directional affects only one side of the extreme, while dis disruptive of acts against the average. It favors um, individuals that are at extreme ends of the population. Change and cha because of that, change and evolution occurs. So let's talk about what evolution is. Um, evolution is a change of genetic composition of a popular, <laughs> a particular um, population. After the genetics, after the gen genetics result from a change in natural selection. <laughs> Changes take a very long time and are supported by a fossil record. Um, we have the concept of the common ancestor, which you all should know, um, saying that all species, human and alike, come from a common ancestor, as could be seen in this picture. Everything branches off from the common ancestor, going into different species and different things. So a bit more on evolution. There's um, multiple types of evolution. So, spectism, convert evolution, evolution relay, parallel evolution, um, gradualism, and punctuated equilibrium. So, about ecosystem services. Um, ecosystem services are the process by which the environment um, provides and produces resources like clean water, timber, and stuff like that. Ecosystem services provide the following services. So moderate weather, weather extremes and their impacts, um, it, it di disperses seeds and generates a preserved soil. It uh, mediates droughts and floods. It cycles through, it cycles and moves nutrients around. Um, it detoxifies and decomposes waste. It maintains biodiversity, control um, architectural pests, and purifies the air and water. Sometimes you kind of mess it up with the pollutions that are going within into the ecosystem. So natural ecosystem changes is going to be our next section. So climate shifts. As you know, um, Earth cycle has gone through many climate cycles, from warming and cooling trends. Factors that influence the climate are um, albedo, re um, reflectivity. The high <laughs> is basically reflectivity. Basically, it's the sun reflecting off of the Earth. Snow and ice and dust have the highest um, have the highest um, albedo, which causes the Earth to cool more. So the more ice and snow there is. And dust, the more the Earth cools. The carbon cycle and the production of carbon dioxide results in the Earth warming, which goes into the greenhouse effect, which is when water, carbon dioxide, and methane is within the Earth's atmosphere, and that makes um, Earth warm up more. But which is good because it keeps Earth warm. But too much can overheat overheat our planet. Um, land mass distribution also affects um, how Earth how the Earth's climate changes. Materials absorb and reflect solar radiation to different effects. So while water reflects more solar energy, um, the land absorbs more of the solar energy. Um, vol volcanoes and um, tonic plates also produce carbon dioxide, which leads in the atmosphere affects the climate even more. And then the wobble of Earth on its axis, al axis also changes the orientation. So like how the Earth is situated on the axis changes how the sun and how our weather is affected. So how our winters and our summers are. And solar output can also change the Earth's temperature. Um, if the sun even changes, goes up a couple of degrees, we're definitely going to feel it on Earth. 
So when there's solar flares and such, it like changes up the Earth's um, atmosphere a bit. Well, the Earth's climate a bit. So here's some major um, climatic periods. So you have from 2 million BC to 12 to 12 um, thousand BC is uh, was an ice age, and then from 12,000 BC to 3,000 BC was a climate optimum, which is the warming period. That's when may, may, many ancient civilizations began and flourished during this time. And from 3,000 to 700 is another cooling trend. And from 750 to um, 900 CE was a warming and cooling trend, kind of bouncy back and forth. So from 900 to 1200 was a little um, climatic optimum. So again, a lot of um, a lot of people flourish, a lot of civilizations flourish, a lot of like countries flourish during this time, and that happened until the um, 1940s, the 1400s, and during the 1500s and 1800s we had like a mini ice age, and from now, and from 1850 to now, is a period of general warming. The Earth is slowly warming up, as you can see in this graph. The graph kind of shows the um, the global temperature trend. How, and how it correlates to the carbon dioxide within the atmosphere. Um, species movement is also a big thing. So movement is for, important for many organisms like birds, flying large distances, and plant seeds being moved by the wind. Um, organisms move to new habitats in order to re reduce um, competition with the with people within their things. Which is why birds move during south during winter to warmer places because winter they don't have enough resources in their normal climates. Ecological succession um, is a gradual and orderly process of ecosystems development and describes the changes of ecosystems through time and distance. Definitely read up on these types of, of successions. They're important. So that's it for this. Um, let's go through the questions real quick. I'm going to give you five seconds for each question, so pause the video and copy them down. I'll put the answers below. So it's the first set of questions. This is the second set of questions. And this is the third and last set of questions. Alright y'all, thank you for watching the video. Alright, remember, good luck on the AP exam. Remember to look below for links to, for a link to this presentation and other helpful links to other helpful resources. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at ucsd.eaop.tutors at gmail.com. Also, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more review sessions. Have a good day.